Python pals, this is Prof G. Let's get pushy with buttons. In an earlier lesson, we worked with the built-in buttons on the Circuit Playground Bluefruit, and that was fun. But what if your board doesn't have any built-in buttons? Well, we can connect them using a breadboard or by directly wiring them to the board. So in this CircuitPython school lesson, we're going to look at different varieties of buttons, we'll explore how buttons work, we'll wire up some buttons, then we'll learn how to code in CircuitPython for some button responding goodness, we'll learn why a resistor is usually necessary when using buttons, and we'll give examples of wiring and code using both an internal pull-up resistor and an internal pull-down resistor, and we'll even show how to implement buttons on boards with different pinouts, specifically the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect and the Adafruit Cutie Pie RP2040. Python programmer, this CircuitPython school lesson is all about buttons, so it's time to press on. Buttons are digital inputs, and there are a lot of varieties of buttons. I've got this display outside my office at school showing various button types and just a few that you might encounter. So some are meant for a breadboard, different types can have a different tactile feel, they can come in different sizes, and there are also these arcade style buttons that are meant to be wired up. These usually have a lip on them and a screw on the other side so that they can be screwed into a mounting hole on a case, for example. These buttons also come in all sorts of sizes and shapes. Now most buttons are referred to as momentary push buttons. These are on as long as they're pressed, release them and the circuit is no longer connected, but there are also these latching on off buttons, which are really more like switches. These buttons act like a toggle, making an electrical connection when they're on and they stay on until the button is pressed again and it's toggled off. Some even have lights to indicate when they've been pressed. If you have a button with a light, then you're gonna need some extra wiring to accommodate the light. We'll skip the lighted buttons in this tutorial, but let me show you how to wire up the three most commonly used buttons. Now there are a few approaches to wiring buttons, but we're going to use what I think is the simplest approach. So we're going to use just two pins, ground and a digital signal. And we're going to use only two wires and no physical resistors. We can do that by programming what's called an internal pull-up resistor. I'll explain the internal resistor concept later, but here's what your wiring should look like. And I've got three basic button types and three diagrams to show how this would work, but all three of them are basically the same. So this is a two-leg button, this is a common four-leg button, this is an arcade-style button. These two can be plugged directly into the breadboard. This one has a separate cable, but in all three cases, one leg goes to ground and the other leg goes to a digital pin. And in the example that I'll show, I'm gonna be using pin D2. So my students have one of these tiny buttons, the six millimeter tactile slim buttons, they're sold in packs of 20, and they have two legs on them. So one will be for ground, the other should be connected to the digital signal pin. And again, buttons have no polarity, so it doesn't matter which goes to which. So you can plug this button into a breadboard like this. Make sure you line your jumper wires up with the legs on your button. Sometimes this is tough to see. And when I press the button, a connection is made. The signal wire reads the electricity pass to ground. It reports this as a low voltage reading. And in this build, when this happens, I turn all the LEDs in my strip green. Similarly, when I lift my finger off, electricity is not flowing across the legs of this button and the LEDs turn off. And this diagram here is meant to show what's happening inside the button. When it's not pressed, there's no connection made between the legs. And when it is pressed, the legs are electrically connected and we can read this as a zero or false. And when that happens, I program the NeoPixel strip to light up. Now there's also this kind of button with four legs, very common. Usually the legs that are furthest apart are connected to each other. So these legs here that are curving in on each other are the same while these ones are opposite and the ones diagonally across from each other are opposites too. So if you use a leg on this side for a signal, you can use either one on this side for ground. And usually to make this easier to remember, if I have a four leg button, I usually straddle the ravine in the breadboard and I put ground on one side and signal on the other. Now another interesting thing to note, normally the ravine cuts off columns that are above and below each other on the breadboard, but since these legs are connected, then all of the holes above and below the two legs that are connected are also connected. Now this diagram here is also meant to show what's happening inside this button. Here where it's not pushed, here where it's pushed. And finally, here is one of the arcade style push buttons that my students have. Now we connect these using these arcade style quick connect cables and we slide these metal crimp connections over the terminals on the buttons. It's sometimes tough to do, be careful. You can find a strong friend, sometimes pliers help. And then you can put pin pin jumper wires, one on each side of the JST connection and the other side of the wire into your breadboard. And if you needed to for a more permanent connection without the breadboard, you could even cut off the ends of this cable and solder each end directly to your microcontroller. Just a quick warning, it looks like my pins are poking out a little bit. You want to make sure the metal never touches. Now in the earlier CircuitPython School videos, we worked with two buttons built into the Circuit Playground Bluefruit or CPB. Remember those? They were button A and button B. 
But be aware, with the circuit that I showed you that connected a button using the digital wire and the ground wire, the button code is not going to be the same as the code we used with the CPB. The code is going to be a bit different. So what is the same is that we'll import digital I.O. That's because buttons are digital input devices. Then we'll declare a digital input output object. I'm going to call mine button here. And I have this one hooked up to pin D2 on my board. I'm going to demonstrate this in an Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. You can use the same code with any other CircuitPython on board, just make sure that you choose a pin that can be used as a digital input and that you put that pin's name in here. And just to show you how to wire this up and modify it on another board with different pinouts, I'll compare this to a Cutie Pie RP2040 at the end of this video. Then we set the button object we created above to read digital input. We do that with button dot switch to input. But inside the parentheses is where things get different. So on the circuit playground board, we set the input with what's called a pull down resistor. But when working with buttons wired up with a ground wire, we'll be using a pull up resistor. So in between parentheses, we're going to pass in pull equals digital IO dot capital P pull dot all caps up UP. And I'll describe why in just a moment. Just know that this is the code that you want to use if you're going to wire two wires to your button, one ground and the other a digital input pin. You do not want to copy the code from CPB examples and use it unchanged. Now here's our test code and another thing to note. On the CPB, we knew a button was being pushed when the button's value property was true. But for buttons wired up this way with the ground and digital input pin, when the button is pressed, the value property will be false. I know that seems kind of backwards. Why is this the case? Well, when the button is pressed, we read a voltage drop as the circuit connects to ground, and that's reported as button value equal to false. Now, if it's hard to wrap your head around the electronics of this, just remember, ground wiring to a button, use pull up resistor, and the button press is detected when the value is false. So let's try this out in code, see it in action, and after we write our code, I'll show you why pull ups are important. So we're going to write code for pushing buttons, and we're going to import board, comma time, comma digital IO, comma NeoPixel. And then we're going to create a digital in out object. We'll call that button. So we'll say button equals digital IO dot digital in out. That's capital D, capital I, capital O. And in parentheses, we're going to pass in board dot D2. That's the digital input pin that my button is connected to. If you used a different pin, make sure that you enter that here. Then we're going to make sure that we declare the button as an input device. So we're going to say button dot switch underscore to underscore input. But in parentheses, we're going to pass in pull equals digital IO dot capital P pull dot and in all caps UP up. Remember, we use an internal pull up resistor if we wire our button to a ground pin and a digital input pin. Use the ground pin. Use the pull up resistor. Then we'll just declare a NeoPixel object. We'll call this strip and we'll do it all on one line. Strip equals NeoPixel dot NeoPixel capital N capital P. And in parentheses, we'll pass in board dot D7. I'm going to keep my NeoPixels wired to D7 as they were in the previous example. Comma 30, comma brightness equals 0 0.5, comma auto underscore right equals true. And then inside of our while true loop, if button dot value colon, now remember this is the true value for when the button is not pressed, we're going to set strip dot fill equal to with double parentheses. 0, 0, 0. So that's going to turn off the light when the button is true, when the button is not pressed. Else, colon, now remember that's going to be false when the button is pressed. So when we press the button, it registers as false. And what we want to do there is light up in green. So we're going to say strip.fill double parens 0, 255, comma 0. Then I'll outdent with a time.sleep and in parentheses 0 0.2 for 2 tenths of a second. And you know what? Why don't we put some print statements in here so we can see what's happening in the console as well. So in the else area where we have a false or a button press registered, I'm going to put in print and in quotes false pressed. And then in the true area, I'm going to put in print true not pressed. Then I'm going to save this open the serial console and you can see that I've got my momentary push button the arcade style button hooked up here but this would work with any style button and when I press the button the buttons light up you see it says false but pressed release were true not pressed lights go off press again false pressed lights turn on in green let go true not pressed lights go off press again we've got false pressed lights on green things are working great nice work
Now I want to demonstrate what happens when we remove the pull-up resistor, but I took a break recording this video, headed into work, had office hours, and I left the bag of parts that I was using to record this video in my office, but there's a chance to show you we can use the same code and the same wiring with different hardware. So here's one of those six millimeter slim tactile buttons with two legs that I've plugged into the breadboard. One leg goes to ground, the other goes to D2. It does not matter which goes to which, there's no polarity with the buttons. And I'm now using a NeoPixel strand instead of a strip. See how these lights are on bendy wire about four inches apart. That's a strand, but it works the same way. Same three wires in the same three locations I was using earlier. The only difference is that the strand has 20 lights instead of 30. So I broke out my strip pin and my strip num of lights values here and changed strip num of lights to 20. But as you can see, it all works the same. When I'm not pressing the button, it's true. Button is not pressed. But when I press the button, all the lights turn on and I see it says false and the button is pressed. Now to show you what happens if we didn't use the pull-up resistor, I'm gonna comment out this line here, button dot switch to digital input with the pull-up inside the parens. So I'll just put the hashtag in front of this line. And I'm also gonna change the sleep time to 0.05, just so that I can see more output closer together. And now watch what happens when I run and open up the serial console. I'm not touching the button, but I can see that the button value fluctuates between true and false and the lights are flashing. Now yours might fluctuate a bit more or less than I'm showing you here, especially if you move your hand closer or farther away from the wires, but we're definitely not getting the reliable true, not pressed off reading that we should be getting when I'm not touching the button. So what's happening here? Well, this is what's referred to as floating or high impedance state. Now the value for the pin isn't high or low in this case, it can fluctuate. It can change based on the electrical radiation it reads from the room, or even if your hand is touching the wire. Now watch what happens if I push the button. I get the false pressed and the light turns on. And if I hold my finger down, the lights remain on. So pressing the button works. I can reliably read the low value. It's just reading the digital pin that's causing a problem, and I need that to consistently report a high state. So the way that I fix this is by adding this internal pull-up resistor. I don't need to put a physical physical resistor in. This is something that's built into most microcontrollers, and it certainly is in the Arduino Nano RP2040 that we're using. And by adding this pull-up resistor, it's going to make the button seem like it's in a high state when it's not pressed, so it continues to pull up the reading high. And that'll get rid of any floating readings, any high impedance readings. It will remain high when it's not pressed, true. When you press it, it's going to be false. But if you forget the pull-up resistor and you're using button wiring with a digital pin wire and a ground wire, then you won't get a reliable reading for when the button is not pressed. So one way you can think about this is when we add a pull-up resistor, it's like we're saying, hey, digital pin, you're all over the place. Take this pull-up. I'm going to make you high because ground always tells me it's low. Now you might be wondering, if there's a pull-up resistor, is there a pull-down resistor too? And there is, but we don't need it with this wiring scheme. We're using a digital pin and a ground wire. Wire, and the ground pin reads accurately as false when the button is pressed. So we need to pull up that floating digital pin value so that the opposite of our accurate ground reading is going to be up or high or true. But it is possible to, instead of using a ground wire, we could use a power wire wiring the non-digital leg of our button to the 3.3 volt power pin on our board. Now if we do that, the power pin makes the high state true when the button is pressed. Remember, the digital pin fluctuates between high and low. So if we have a high reading or true when pressed, the opposite of this guy over here, because over here we're using ground which reads low, but over here we're using power which reads high then we need to pull down the digital pin here. Now in this code, I've also switched the pixels. I turn the lights green if true and off if false. That's the opposite of what we did over here. And when using the power wiring scheme and the pull down resistor, I print true pressed and false not pressed. Again, the opposite of what we had over here. Now from a logical perspective, I actually like this side using the power wire better. True means pressed and that seems more natural to me, but you'll see more examples using the ground wire with a pull-up resistor and pressed being registered as false. And that's because most engineers will think that there's less chance of damage occurring if we have one less always on power wire in our wiring. And that's what we have over here. So I'm gonna suggest that we use this scheme with the ground wire and digital pin whenever we can. But just to show you, and you can follow along if you'd like, I've wired up this button, but now instead of a ground wire, I'm running the wire that isn't the digital pin to 3.3 volts, the always on pin. So I don't have a ground in this wiring scheme anymore. So I need to go back to my code, change the resistor to pull dot down. I'm also going to change the color for true to green, and I'm going to make sure that it prints true dash pressed. And for false, I'm going to make sure that I turn off all of the lights and I'm going to print false, not pressed. 
And when I run this, this also works fine too. Press the button, lights go on, remove your finger, lights go off. It's the opposite of what we had previously. So you could use this wiring as well, but I'm gonna recommend that first scheme with ground and digital wire instead of 3.3 volt wire and digital wire. But know that if the design ever calls for something like this, you can make it work with a pull down resistor, reading pressed as true. And that's it. And as promised, here's the extra bonus. Now just to show you that our Cutie Pie RP2040 can go head to head with a bigger board that we were using and to demonstrate how we would change things up if we used a different board with different pinouts, I've wired up the Cutie Pie RP2040 like this. The NeoPixel is connected, power to 3.3 volt, signal to A1, ground to ground, and the button's two wires are signal to A2 and ground to ground. Now in our code, going back and using the code we originally used when we hooked up a button to the ground pin, we're just going to change the NeoPixel strip pin to A1 and our button pin to A2. Then we can run this, click the button, and look at that. When we press the button, the lights light up in green. But when we're not pressing, the lights go off. Messages are showing up as expected in the console. Excellent multi-board work, my friend. So this video was full of big learning. We learned about different kinds of buttons, how to wire up a button using two pins, ground and digital in, how to code in CircuitPython to read and respond to button presses. We showed different kinds of buttons in use, an arcade style button and a tactile slim button attached directly to a breadboard, but the wiring in the code was the same for either button. We showed why you need a pull up resistor with a two wire ground and digital pin wiring scheme because that digital pin will float or show high impedance and can't be read reliably, but pull up fixes that and makes it seem like the digital pin is always high until pressed. And then we showed that it's possible to wire buttons up with a power wire instead of a ground wire if you use a pull down resistor and read true as pressed. But it's more likely that you're going to see the wiring with ground wire and digital pin and using a pull up resistor and reading button press equals false. And we showed how we could implement the same concepts we learned on a board with different pinouts, specifically the Cutie Pie RP2040. So feel free to practice this if it's tough to wrap your head around the electronics, wiring, and logic. I'm sure you'll get it with practice. And you should feel like your engineering skills and wiring knowledge are increasing, as is your ability to control your builds in CircuitPython. Keep hacking!